May we be seated. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary and Joseph. In the gospel reading today, we see how Christ, with great concern for the needs of the people, worked such a great miracle with five loaves of bread and two fish to feed 5,000 men, excluding um, women and children. Also, you see the same done by the prophet Elisha, who was able to feed 100 men with just 20 loaves of barley. That was a great miracle. And that was why they, when he told the servant, give it to the people to eat. The, quest, the servant, how am I to set this before a hundred men? The question we should ask ourselves this morning is, what do you have? What do you have that you can bring before God? It could happen sometimes people complain and there is no one that God has not given something. Each and every one of us, no matter our background, no matter our own experience, each and every one of us is endowed with gifts. So what is that gift that you can bring before God? People who work in the office. But they need to realize that position is God's gift to you. No matter how you get there. You are married. Your husband is God's gift to you. Your wife is God's gift to you. Your children is God's gift. They are God's gift to you. Your neighbors are God's gift to you. Your friend is God's gift to you. Your talent is God's gift to you. Sometimes people have uh, the talent to sing. A talent to be, when they are in the midst of any situation, uh, uh, midst of people, that makes the situation so lively. That some people have a gift of organizing things. So there is no one. The people who have gifts, that they can pray. There are people who have gifts. They can counsel, give advice. So what is that your gift? We read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. First of all, we need to ask the question, God, what is the gift you have given to me? We need to be aware because you can be worried about so many things, you, you tend to forget what God has given to you. Because if we don't acknowledge and appreciate what God has given to you, us, we will not use them well. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than the than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was so upon me. This was Paul. He realized the kind of life he was living before. He realized what it was, was God's gift to him. Even he told the apostles, I didn't come to you people, for you people to appoint me as a prophet, as an as apostle, but it was from God Christ himself. So very important awareness Ask, don't always think you don't have anything. There is no one. You have something. You have something. Everyone, no matter how small you are, no matter who you are, you have something. Ask yourself, what is this gift? And know that this gift is from God. Sometimes people labor, work, study, do a lot of things. They're able to achieve a lot. But it's all about God. Because if God does not give you good health, you will not be able even to walk. If God does not give you the good health, you will not even be able to do anything. If someone is sick in the hospital, he's able to do anything. 
So it's all about God's gift. Be aware. And you see this also in the first reading. The, a man came from Baal Shalisha. You know, in response to God's invitation, the first fruit, he realized that was the command, um, commandment of God that Moses gave to them that every first fruit should be bring before God. So he realized that, that the labor of his hand, whatsoever he did, was from God. The blessing was from God. And that was why even during the time of famine, he would have chosen to keep those things, but he preferred to bring it before God because he realized that it is all about God, that God gave him this um, fruit. So he needs to obey God, and he brought it before God. And you can see what God brought it before God. You can see the whole, what happened as a result of this. Also, the young man in the, the gospel reading today, the parents gave him these five loaves and two fish for him to eat when he's hungry. But when the Jesus looked at the people, he had compassion on them, was thinking how to feed them. When he asked Philip, and it was Andrew that said, there is a young boy here. But the question we should ask is, uh, the moment when they asked the question, because of the crowd, I believe the boy raised off his hand, I have something. You can see he realized that he's not actually his own. And he, he, but that willingness to do what? To give. And he brought it before the apostles. And that was how Jesus said, bring it, uh, bring them to me. And he gave thanks to God. And it was enough for everyone. So awareness. Always be aware of what God has given to you. The second thing is um, acknowledgement. You know, when you are aware of what God has given to you, you know, acknowledge it that it's from God. And how do you acknowledge it is from God? You give thanks. You know, if you read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For who make you, for who make it thee to differ from another? What hast thou that, I did, or that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast it not received? So, I know acknowledgement that it is God's gift. I receive it from God. So when you acknowledge that it's from God, you will be, you know, give credit to God, give thanks to Him. Now it's when you read Second Corinthians, um, twenty, Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. We hold. We hold this treasure in an earthen vessel so that the surpassing power belongs not to us but to God. So whatsoever, I've mentioned so many things, you must realize it's God that has given it to you. And then very important, acknowledgement. And don't keep it to yourself. Whatsoever God has given to you. You know, there is a problem we call about self-absorption, individualism, consumerism, everything about the person. The more we keep it to ourselves, the more we limit the blessings of God. The more we keep it to ourselves, the more we limit what God can do, the great miracle called God can, can work. The first reading, the man brought it before the, the, um, the, um, the prophet, and the prophet said he did not keep it to himself. He said, give it to the people to do what? To eat. Because God has said so. And, um, and, and they ate and they had some left according to the word of the Lord. The same thing in the gospel reading today. Christ gave, he said, gave it, to, give it to the people and they ate. They all were satisfied because the young boy was willing to do what? To share. He was willing to give. And Christ also was willing to do what? To share it among the people. 
husband and wife. Husband and wife. You see, the problem in the society today begins from home. You know, if families are what God wants them to be, then the world will be at peace. There will be a lot of good things. You see, as a father, sometimes children, as they grow, they don't have image of God. But what you do will present to them what God is. When we say our father, so if you are as a father, you do all you can to do what? To be that father. The way God. An aspect of a father is sharing. Do you know your child can live with you for a number of years, he doesn't really know you as a father. But he should be willing to do what? To share. You know, that demands a lot of sacrifice and patience. Sometimes people are so busy, busy, don't even have time. That's sharing. Share with your child your life. Share with your child your own experiences. Share with you. There's so much you can share with your child. You know, it's, it's a gift of self that you're not keeping it to yourself. You can tell your child your experiences, what the mistakes are, what, and, you know, honestly, sharing, not telling them lies. Sometimes people say something, but it's not true. But honestly telling your child a kind of sharing, gifts of yourself, you know, playing with your child. Let that child has what God, the figure of a father who loves, a father who understands, a father who listens. That sharing is very important. He say, you know your father. What do you know about your father? He doesn't even know anything. But if the father is very sharing, you know, such a person who is open, honestly sharing the gifts of himself will be very important to that child. The same thing a mother. Your child could be there, wouldn't even know the mother. Or you just, but it should be that gift. Gifts of yourself to your child. Sharing. But let your child understand how much you love. Let your child understand how much you care as a mother. So that wherever the person goes, you know, sometimes they say, why do, uh, does uh, you see uh, a man beat their wife? You say, learn it from the father. Because he thought that his own one say, ah, that is how he thought it, that is how it should be. That a man should beat a, a woman. Where did he learn it from? From the father. But if you are seeing that my father has never, it will be very difficult for such a man to do what? To beat his wife. So that, that, that aspect of the home, you know, sharing of self, you know, sharing of your experiences, a gift of yourself, you know, to your children is very important. Because when you do that, you don't lose. You do what? You gain. And you know, the children would understand that the parents love them. They would understand that the par parents cares for them. You know, sometimes it's very difficult to see in a family that say, I hate my father. I hate, what is the common, what, what, what are they learning? That to the extent to say, I hate my father. I hate my mother. And I know of a family because of what was happening in the family. Now the child doesn't even want to see the father. He doesn't want to see the mother. He doesn't want to talk to the mother. Why? Was that sharing? Because if there is that aspect of sharing, gifts of self, they will miss the parent. You know, when it is a life, people live together wherever they go. I miss my dad. I miss my mother. Because as a result of the what? Experience. So when people hold back, keep, you know, sometimes being forever, you know, let your parents know, your children know you make mistakes. You know, let them know you learn from your mistakes. You know, let them know what you have gone through in life. You know, don't hold it. Let them know. That is a gift to your child. A child will know, I know my father. I know my mother. Because of what you have learned, they have learned from the parents. The same thing about children. I know children sometimes uh, uh, find it difficult, you know, you know to, be, uh, to share. You know, you find it dif difficult to share with your parents. You prefer to go out and share. And um, if you are unlucky enough to share with a bad person, they will use that to do what? To ruin your life. But as a result of that fear that the children have, so they no longer have confidence in the parent. They prefer to go outside because they say, if I tell my father this, he will beat me. If I tell my mommy this, he will kill me. So they prefer to go outside and tell others. But if you have been sharing, there will be that, that willingness for them to also do what? Share. 
So children, don't run away from your parent. Be willing to share. Because when you share, you gain. That is what God wants us to learn today. An aspect of sharing. Don't keep it. You have problem. Share it with your parent. Don't be afraid of them. You know, someone told me something. And it was, it was quite in, um, interesting. And what did she say? That when she was in the, in the boarding school, what happened was that they would be giving her pocket money. And she would try her best not to spend all their money. She would be saving, saving, saving. So by the time they would close, she would go and collect her money and then they would buy gifts for the parents. Sometimes children always receive, 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 even when they have. Hoarding, they say they don't have. Tell lies, stories, just to get more and more. But they don't think about how can I share? That's what I'm saying. There's no one who has nothing. Everyone has something. To be able, the little you have, you be willing to do what? To do what? To share. Don't keep it and hoard it. When you hoard it and keep it, you limit a lot of people who will be blessed. You limit the miracle. If people are always praying for miracle, miracle. Do you share? If you don't share, how will God work that miracle? So God depends on that sharing. To do what? To do, you know, in this country, there was a time they, during COVID, they... They hurt so many things, you know, people broke into the storerooms, keeping it for what? So there are a lot of things oh, we need to understand. Whatsoever God has given to you, share. And it is not for you alone, it's for the benefit of what? Others. Look at the first reading. It wasn't for the prophet alone. Look at the, the gospel reading. It wasn't for the young boy alone. It was for the benefit of others. So whatsoever you have, think about others and uh, let it be for the good of others you know sometimes we think about advice counseling you know something you hear even sometimes you enter buses or public transportation just hear what people say terrible words terrible words you hear all kinds of negative words what are people sharing? They may not have money. But, they, but can people share something better than that? Sometimes it's difficult for people to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's difficult for people to let go, to forgive. Can you share something good? Your forgiveness. Good words. Share good words. It is well. Word of affirmation. Well done. It will be better. You know, such words are gifts God has given to you. But people can, even wisdom, that people are very intelligent. But they use that intelligence to do what? Destroy, do all kinds of evil. Can you use that intelligence to do good that people benefit from it? Use that intelligence to create things that people from generation to generation will benefit from it. And people can do so many things. The gift God has given to you. You know, if you read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. So whatsoever God has given to you, I've already said... Be aware, acknowledge it, thank God, share, and then bring it before God. The question people should always be asking God, God, how do you want me to use this, your gift? How do you want me to use it well that will be to your glory? And that is why Tim, um, um, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, said, As for those who in this present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provide us with everything for our enjoyment. Then, the next verse, they are to do good. They are to do good. To be rich in good works, generous, and ready to do what? To share. Then the next verse, they are storing up for themselves treasures of good foundation for the future 
so that they may take hold of that life that really is life. No, some will say, you don't know how I labor for this. Oh, you don't know what I do. But that is not this is whether you labor for it. Like I said at the beginning, it's God's blessing. There are people who have labor and labor and labor. They don't see anything. There are people who have work and work and work. They don't see anything. So for the fact that God has done it, you need to what? Be grateful to God. Don't think it is your own. Use it for the glory of God. Do good. You know, sometimes um, um, so many things, um, you know, I was in the seminary, um, in the seminary, he uh, said um, the, the man came all the way from U.S. just to visit us because he donated a generator. The school has been in darkness for a number of, um, of is it a years or so. So the, the man was told that they have a foundation. And so when he came, one of the things he said was that, that his father started this word foundation. You can see the people, the seminarians are benefiting from this because of that good work the father that did what started. And you can see how they will be able to enjoy the light, do a uh, read and do all kinds of things. This Nigeria, if we are really generous and share, a lot of people will benefit from that. So we should always uh, bring it before God, whatsoever God has given to us. You know, we remember our Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, Mary had only one son. And that was everything to her. Jesus was everything. If you know, if you have only one child, you will understand how that child is, what that child means to you. Then what happened during the presentation? Mary gave everything. And that was why the prophet said, a sword will pierce through your own soul. Because that presentation that Mary did at the temple was that she was willing to let her son suffer for the redemption of mankind. She was willing to let us, and that was why during the, the, the passion of Christ, as he was carrying the cross during the fourth station, when Mary met the son, he couldn't, you know, if, if she was not willing, she would not allow, no, you would not do it. It's too much. But she resigned to God's will so that she knew by that, look at how many of us Catholics are children of Mary because she gave her only son to God. So, that is the same thing we need to understand. You know, in friendship, you know, people get into all kinds of friendship. But I tell you, they don't share. But well, somebody can be with someone as a friend two years. He doesn't even know the person. When they marry, say, I didn't even know. This person is like, why? They pretend, they keep to themselves, and that is why they cannot love. And, and that is the problem. Because um, people cannot really, you know, love. And, and I think even in life, people don't even understand. People can live in this world. They have never experienced love. They don't have the capacity to do what? To love because they didn't know. So people enter into friendship. What do they do? They use one another. That is why um, um, St. Pope John Paul II um, said the greatest evil in the world today is not about lack of love, but what? The problem is what? People use one another. They enter into friendship. They're thinking what they can get. But they're not thinking of what they can get. Friendship. What do they do? They use one another. That is why um, um, St. Pope John Paul II um, said the greatest evil in the world today is not about lack of love, but what? The problem is what? People use one another. They enter into friendship. They're thinking what they can get. But they're not thinking of what they can share. You know, between husband and wife, you don't think of what you can share to enrich this other person's life, to make this other person's life better. But they're thinking what they can get. And that is why all kinds of broken heart, all kinds of problems. Because if they're really sharing, you will know this person is the gift, a treasure to you. That is what sharing is all about. But because people lack that capacity, they'll go for other things that are opposed to God. Pleasure, all kinds of things in the name of what? Friendship and the name of what? Love. After I say, I don't even know this person. Well, how will you know? How will you know? But when people have not learned to do what? To share gifts of self. That is why there are so many things you can share, you know. And so that is the beauty of life. So, like I said, you know, even the choir here, look at how many? One, two, three, four. Is it only four persons who can sing in this church? 
But God can give you that gift. But will you keep it to yourself? You can learn to do what? To share. Let people benefit from my sinking. There are people who will sink. Things will happen. Let people benefit from my sinking. You know, that the very association in the church, charismatic, all kinds. People can join. He said, I want to use my gift. I want to use my gift to share with what God has uh, uh, given to me. It makes life beautiful. It makes the community, you know, loving community. Because people are willing to do what? To share with what God has given to them for the good of others. And that is how we become God's children and becomes what God wants us to do. And you know, the, the miracle of, of, of the Christ walk with the, the five loaves of bread and two fish is also prefigured the Eucharist. Do you know what? Do you know because Christ's willingness and love for us to offer himself as a, a living sacrifice, of course, that is exactly what happened. On the cross, that is what also happened during the Eucharist in a bloody manner. But what is that? Gifts of himself to us. Sharing. He said, there is no greater love than this than for a friend to lay down his life for his friend. So you can see, if he held back, if he did not want to give himself, well, we would have benefited from the graces that comes from this Eucharist. Nowhere. And so from one bread and one, wine, and one cup, we all share. So you can see, when you receive Holy Eucharist, like I was talking with someone yesterday, I said, nobody can fully understand the benefit what we receive. Nobody until after this life. Because as so much you receive is because of Christ's a, a gift of himself to us. We receive grace. And most importantly, we receive what? Love. So anyone who complains, God does not love them. When, when, when you receive the Holy Eucharist, what do you receive? You receive love. And so in the same way God gives to us, we should also be generous to do what? To share. You receive love, share love. You receive grace. Be channel of graces to others. Receive spiritual blessing. Be an encouragement to others. You know, also in the sacrament of reconciliation, it will be very difficult for someone to make a good confession if the person is not willing to do what? To share. And those who make good confession, you can see the transformation that takes place. You can see the healing that takes place. You can think, see a lot of things. But people can go to confession, but that openness to share everything, not to hold back anything, I have seen. It takes someone who is what willing to do what? To share. And the moment you open up to God in the sacrament of reconciliation, what happened? You receive more because you don't hold back. You know, that is why sometimes people find it difficult to forgive. Because when you forgive, a lot of open channels of blessings, open channels of uh, graces upon you. And that is why, what survive it is, let us understand that is God's gift to us. So the sacrament of reconciliation, you know, it should be a thing, you know, when you are maybe uh, there for sacrament of reconciliation, you can see a lot of people going, you know, going to receive the grace of God because they are willing to let go. They are willing to, God, take it. I give you everything. You know, even to live a good Christian life, a marriage life, if you are not generous to share, you cannot because it's all about God. You have given me this body. Like St. Paul tells us, we are God's God has bought us with uh, his precious blood. We are not our own. We are God's own property. Use your body for the glory of God. Unless we are willing to share and give ourselves, it will be difficult for us to live that Christian life, to be chaste, to be pure. It will be difficult. But when we are willing, God, I give you everything. I don't hold back anything. It will be very easy. So we pray this morning. May God grant us the grace. To understand whatsoever we are, what, let us be generous. Let us be willing to share so that others will benefit from the gift God has given to us. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore.